Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are connected with Harley Schlanger from the Roos Foundation all the way to his uh, uh, place in Austria. He'll be back here over the holidays. Uh, lots of very important topics happening, and the powers of darkness are being shaken to their foundations, aren't they? Oh, they're very desperate right now. I mean, Obama's so desperate, he's trying to sound like a liberal. Uh, after all this time, he was... I mean, actually, he can't, he can't believe anything he says. But the real uh, test, is, as you and I were just discussing, is that the American Bankers Association sent a whole team of their lobbyists, also known as their thugs, to the National uh, Council of State Legislators Convention to kill one bill which was introduced by a Maine state senator for Glass-Steagall. And she did a wonderful job promoting it, discussing it, presenting it. And then they read a letter from the American Bankers Association saying why this is no good. A letter that was written by a banker in Maine for the governor of Maine to say he denounces this woman, Andrea Boland, because she never should have done this. And they did everything they could to suppress any discussion on Glass-Steagall. Now, the other thing they're doing to try to, to head off the momentum for Glass-Steagall is they had a series of emergency sessions where they finalized the so-called Volcker Rule. And, boy, I feel sorry for Paul Volcker, who's not a good guy, but his name is going to be connected in infamy now to this new form of the banker's protection. So we can talk about the Volcker Rule, but essentially your point was totally right. There's panic in Wall Street. There's panic in the city of London. There was incredible panic when the president of Ukraine and the parliament of Ukraine rejected the European Union, and instead they said they wanted to go with Putin. And now you have all the Europeans and George Soros and all the international bankers pouring money into Ukraine to try and overthrow the government there. Uh, you've got Lady Gaga joining with the president of Germany, Gawk, calling for a boycott of the Sochi Olympics, the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia in 2014. So, yeah, your, your characterization is absolutely right. They have gone bonkers. Now, the other thing is that's happening is they're trying to suppress the Glass-Steagall. Uh, this is like, um, how can I say, it's like pulling the plugs from Frankenstein's neck. Uh, if you uh, pass Glass-Steagall, the head of the bobble-headed president we have would pop off. Uh, all the, the too big to jail banks would be jailed. We would have, instead of a slap on the wrist or the so-called Volcker rule, the idea that what they did with Jamie Dimon would not happen. People would get a steel toilet, a concrete small cell, and no internet access and no walking in the, in the yard. Uh, this is not, this is freaking them out completely because they realize that the game is up. And both China and Russia just are totally fed up with the Fed Reserve trying to manipulate international finance to their advantage over China and Russia and all of their affiliate countries. And they're tired of it. And, and, and let me just add, what LaRue said yesterday is that what we're dealing with is funny money. So let's right. treat it like funny money and cancel it. That's what you have to do. That's what Glass-Steagall would allow you to do. Instead right. of killing people to collect funds to prop up the, the worthless assets, you would shut those banks down and their worthless assets with them. Well, and let's do a prediction. That's what we could do. Let's do a prediction in 2014 if we don't do these things that LaRouche has called for in your organization. Number one, uh, there are 19 other districts larger than Detroit that will go bankrupt, which means, and I saw a husband, wife, both police, policemen, policewoman and policemen uh, in Detroit that will be destitute and will die as a result of this judge's uh, decision about the bailing of yeah, let's, let's just put the, let's just put the figures to it. The police yeah. officers in Detroit retire with about a twenty thousand dollar a year pension. If they right. were higher up, it might be twenty five, twenty eight thousand. That's not right. much. Now, you're going to the the bankruptcy ruling will take away sixty to eighty percent of that. Let's say it's it's sixty percent, the lower figure. Someone who's making twenty thousand would now be making eight thousand as a pension. Right. You can't survive on eight thousand dollars. There's no way, especially when you have to buy insurance for Obamacare now. That is a death sentence, and that's what right. that no, judge in Detroit did. And by the way, even Obamacare is catastrophic insurance. It's not social health care. Even uh, 
the uh, the the mayor of Toronto, <laughs> or sort the, of the premier of Ontario, uh, I guess Rob Ford. I'm sorry, mayor of Toronto, said, who's a crack, yeah. uh, who by crack. He asked the questions. Obviously, he was not on crack that day, and got the answer that oh, it isn't social health care; it's corporate health care. See, this is yeah. you know, real social health care would go beyond even what Canada has. I call responsible health care, where you don't even need to have insurance; you just prove that you're a citizen, and. You don't worry about pre-existing conditions because it never comes, it even comes up. You don't have to have a database and billing codes. If you need to spend an hour with your doctor, you get an hour because the doctor is paid hourly. Uh, and the surgeon is paid the same amount of money whether or not he's cutting somebody or he's treating wounds or preventing illness or teaching or involved with... And therefore you know, there's surgery. no need to add expensive surgery because the, the doctor's going to get paid whether he does the surgery or not, which means if you don't need it, he's not going to do it. Exactly. So the, the, the whole model of medicine needs to change so it's much more rational, it's much more inventive, and you pay doctors more based on years of experience, training, public service, and inventing new ways to prevent illness and make people better. So they publish, they research, they continue to get new skills. Uh, we give them, pay them lots of money to go back and take continuing education. Uh, what we need to do, is that system costs fraction. We get rid of trial lawyers, which, by the way, are a, we're joined at the hip with the Democratic Party. Uh, the trial lawyers need to go bye-bye. We need to have no more malpractice. It should be mediation only with caps and, uh, and end all this foolishness. This is not going to work. We need to make a system better than Canada, better than Australia. If you want to buy a car, and I just bought a new uh, town and country minivan, I'm almost seven years old, so it's time to change it. And guess where it's made? Windsor, Ontario, Canada. There are no American cars made in America anymore. Yeah. The, 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 also, American cars made, the cars the made in America are all Japanese. The, yeah, it's, the, <laughs> the government just sold off the rest of their General Motors stock. Did you read about this? No. And I think there was yeah, the, a $10 billion loss for the government. Uh, it may have been $20 billion. I don't remember whether it was 10 or 20 But this was the great plan. And Ratner, the, the former uh, Wall Street guy who organized it under Obama, he was the auto czar, he said this was worth it if we lost $10 billion because we saved Detroit. We didn't save Detroit. We gave Detroit a death sentence. I think you call it dead Detroit now. That's, dead -troit, that's yeah. what Obama's policy was. Well, look at what they did with Fiat. They gave a sweetheart deal to, Fiat, a deal to Fiat that basically handed it over to international corporations and says, hey, rip the guts out of America's manufacturing sector and send it elsewhere. And we've, we've had a continuing collapse. The new documents coming out on what the Trans-Pacific Partnership would be are even worse. And then there's the Trans-Atlantic Partnership, the uh, agreement that's being, that Obama was trying to work out with Europe before Europe turned on him because of the NSA scandal. But that would fully eliminate the last vestiges of U.S. sovereignty. We would become a banana republic. And what LaRouche said is instead, let's cancel the funny money and go back to what George Washington and Alexander Hamilton did to build our nation. That's the direction we can go now. Great. Uh, so step one, uh, finger one I call the grip on the scepter by these maniacs, is to pull off and get rid of, uh, put, a, put glass steagall in, to get rid of their creation of a bubble economy. Number two finger is to remove Obama. Impeachment needs to start. And when now we're moving to 2014 elections, midterm elections, this is time to remove him. Uh, number three is we need to repeal Obamacare and put something rational in, like the plan that I'm proposing with Mike Velarde, who's going to be running for Congress in, in uh, Virginia, and he wants me to write up the, the program so that he can present it to, to Congress formally. What we have is a system that is insane, stupid, and expensive, and it's not preventive at all. And we can't compete even on more comp with even Canadians. How ridiculous. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger and LaRouche Foundation. The phone number to call for more info is 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. Back in just a moment. It's a minor 
Welcome back, and we have uh, Harley back. Uh, Harley, the, um, there's lots of opportunities. I think of 2014 as a time of, 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 of what we call potential terror and a lot of opportunities. It's a time when both the Democrat and Republican Party have a chance to actually change and become American again. It's a time when industry can come back here. It's a time when America is now getting independent energy-wise. It's a time when we should start doing major projects like Nawapa to bring water to the southwest and recharge the Ogallala Aquifer, use proper uh, hydrofracking that doesn't involve chemicals because the chemical ones are dangerous and stupid. It's a time when we need to bring industry back to America and rebuild the credit system for small business and uh, rather than the idea of bloating up the bubble economy and sucking dry the real economy and crushing the middle class like a vice between the transnational corporations and the, the growing poverty of America. The amount of number of people are on food stamps and then of course the, the crazy tea partiers think it's a good idea to cut the budget and take away the food stamps. I think just revise the food stamps so it's only for food. It's not for cigarettes, it's not for booze, it's not for video games or movies. It's for food. Period. But you know what else you could do? You could tie the food stamp program to a job creation program. So right. that as people begin to get to the point where they're employed and making money, they won't need food stamps. The tragedy is there are millions of Americans who have full-time jobs whose incomes are so low they still qualify for food stamps because they can't feed their family. Well, and that's, uh, that's where we've come to in this country. Exactly. But let, let me talk, take up what you just said about the opportunity, because, look, we've seen the collapse of Obama's poll numbers with the rollout of Obamacare, because people are beginning to see, now that the computer supposedly is, is improving, now people are getting the sticker shock, and they're freaking out because huh. it's six to $10,000 deductible. And if you can't afford to buy the insurance, how do you pay the deductible? That's one point. But now, with Dodd-Frank's Volcker rule completed yesterday, and the rollout of this taking place, what people are going to see very quickly is that from 2008 to the present, nothing was done to change the way the banks operate, and nothing is going to be done. And I think this is going to cause a, 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 lot, of, a, a lot more people to lose their confidence and look for alternatives. And so you put Obamacare together with the too big to fail banks looking like they're about to fail, another bubble in the stock market about to pop. And as a result, more people are saying, well, is this the best we can do? Is this all there is? And that's where a positive program with Glass-Steagall, with removing Obama, with Nawapa, with the idea of uh, developing a collaborative effort with the Russians to look in the space and see what we can do about asteroids and, and things of that sort. All of these things will create the jobs we need for a better future. So I right. think we've got to do a job of communicating to people that it's not hopeless. That the fact that we have a, a degenerate Congress and a corrupt president doesn't mean it can't be turned around. And, you know, Helga, well, yeah. Mrs. LaRouche was talking the other day about how 10 days before the fall of the wall, Eric Honecker, who was the dictator of East Germany in 1989, at their annual uh, day of uh, the creation of the German Democratic Republic, the East, Com East German Communist regime, Honecker said, this government will last a thousand years. I heard and that 10 before. days later, <laughs> he was on a point. He was on a plane to, I believe, Chile, where he had, was forced to leave the country. The dictatorship collapsed. And these things can happen very quickly. And in the United States, we're so accustomed to a, a constant downward trend that people think that you'd be a fool to expect anything different. And we've got to take the people who are the movers and shakers and get them out there with optimistic policies it will turn yeah. this thing around. And I think you're absolutely right. 2014 is the year we can do it. Exactly. And I think also what we should do is I, I, the term I'm kind of bringing together pieces of it is I call the Joseph Project. And I see this as part of what LaRouche is doing. He's been for decades trying to collaborate with uh, uh, Europe, with Russia, with China, to bring nations together for common projects that involve space, exploration, advanced science, uh, the idea of us being a force for uh, stewardship of the planet Earth without pollution, but 
also with limitless energy. And, co- cooperation based on national sovereignty. Exactly. Now, the idea is that you don't create a global government. You create sovereign, strong governments that have uh, a, a common purpose, but you don't go and try to wrestle power away from them and create a globalist government whose primary intention is to reduce the population and create a tiny clique that will literally we rile the earth with crazy policies like the, the pseudo-environmentalism of global warming, which is vaporizing, uh, when they don't deal with real issues like pollution. Uh, to give an example. I just, uh, when I purchased a new car, they offered me this uh, thing to kind of coat my car called Xylon while I did a little research and, and uh, just had managed to, to, to have a conversation with someone at the car dealership. And they said, oh, no, it's water-soluble, it's non-toxic, it's green. Uh, did you read the brochure? I said, I teach the professors that do this. I said, I'm not a minor, I've been working on this since the 70s. So this stuff is, is basically Teflon. You do not want a fluorinated uh, TFEE product in your body. It's a pseudoestrogen a molecule. These are causing cancer, brain damage, and birth defects, and all kinds of other things. But you see, this wouldn't happen in a rational system like, uh, like I'm talking about, a decentralized system where people are first. What we have with the economy that's being put forward by both Ryan and the Democrats and the Republicans, they're both basically two, I call, packs of wolves trying to tell the sheep that they are going to sort out the recipe cards, like I said a few months ago. And they, they're trying to convince us now, like this wild-eyed look of Ryan and the Tea Parties, and the same with Obama. They're no different. They all have the same goals, which is, we're going to take away your money, we're going to devalue your currency by printing more crazy money, we're going to bail in your deposits and your value of your home. And by the way, when you're crying for another bowl of gruel or more health care, you realize you've got catastrophic insurance and you can't pay even the interest on the, on the, on the, uh, on the catastrophic insurance you know, costs. Of, because you've only got catastrophic. I mean, if you get, for example, a $10,000 debt and you're only making, say, $10 an hour, after six months with no interest, guess what? You're going to pay 12 to 18 percent interest. You're soon going to be bankrupt. What are they going to do then? What are the hospitals going to do? What are the doctors going to do in this kind of system? Well, now, what is the you, but you raise an interesting point. This is why there's a worldwide alert that was put out today by Focus Magazine in Germany. It's the second largest circulation publication in Germany. And right. what they wrote about is the discussions that came out of a, an IMF conference last month where the International Monetary Fund economists are putting forward what they call a global bail-in policy. <laughs> so what you were just bail-in. talking about, people who are losing everything, what this global bail-in would do is take 10 to 20 percent, or maybe even up to 25 percent, of the entire savings and deposits of every person on the planet to retire oh government debt. They won't retire it. If government has money, they spend it. The whole purpose of budgets is to continue to increase it every year on foolishness so they get more power and control. It's never going to work. Yeah, how about the blade between the, the ribs? That's quantitatively eased into your... What do they expect? Next week, we're going to have Keisha Rogers on, and she's going to be running for the Texas Democratic Party uh, for Senate. And uh, again, remember, I support candidates that are American. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat. They have to support American values, which is, is Glass-Steagall, remove Obama, which is what she ran on last year. Uh, the idea that we want to have uh, America for Americans, we want to rebuild the republic. Remember, America is not a democracy. We're not spreading democracy around the world. We're spreading republic, which is strong nations to protect the citizens of that nation against tyranny. And, right now uh, we're spreading globalization and chaos. Right, and we are actually acting as a golem of satanic globalists who have every intention of stripping America of its status as a world power, uh, stripping us of our ability to protect ourselves and even supply our food supply, uh, and even being able to, uh, to defend ourselves against an insane government. People don't understand that what happened is when they... Uh, so the, in South Africa is a good example with the death of uh, Ma- Ma- Nelson Mandela. People don't realize who Nelson Mandela was. He was calling back in the 1962 for the death of whites. He was a member of the uh, ANC National Communist Party of South Africa. 
And when the uh, when the communists came into power, they stripped the citizens, white and black, of guns. And then they had the ANC and these other people have reprisals, killing people like crazy. It drove a lot of the people who managed the country out of the country of all stripes, including Indians and whites. There were a lot of Indians in South Africa, too. Uh, and as a result, the economy there is just limping along. It's not good. And this is the kind of craziness that would happen here in America. It's not going to happen. It's a wet dream of, the, of Obama and all the control freaks that they're ever going to disarm us. In fact, the best salesman for guns in America is Obama. And not, we don't, you don't have guns to use them, just like you don't have nuclear weapons to use them. You certainly can't disarm unilaterally like this idiot Obama. I'm not for nuclear weapons. I think they're dangerous and crazy, but we've proliferated them. Same as we've proliferated financial policies through the Fed Reserve, and now they're replicated by the Chinese who are printing money like crazy, too which is also stupid. You can't create limitless credit in China and then buy everything on the planet with your funny money credit that China's created. They're doing basically the same thing as the Fed Reserve, which is also well, very but the, dangerous. But the one thing, the one thing that's different now that, that actually does represent a change, and I know this from speaking with people from the Chinese government who have participated in conferences with us, is it <laughs> what they would prefer is that the United States go through a bankruptcy reorganization and that the United States stop leading the world with the I, I quantitative to, easing, with the, I, the, uh, dere the deregulation, yeah, the derivatives that's, and so on. That's, that, because what that's the Chinese the are saying is they're not going to open their banking system for a British-American model yeah, but they're doing uh, that. Listen, Harley, I, I have a problem with that because I know several things. We've had on people with the bond market, the people that know, the Chinese owe us three to four billion trillion dollars in bonds were bought going right back to before the Chinese Revolution. And they have both half of that, which is a couple trillion dollars. They try to pretend that the massive amount of the debt is held by China. China is creating credit out of nowhere and buying farms and access to things all over the world. And I don't agree. I think that they want to reorganize America. No, they want to buy it out. They want to take it over. They want to, The Chinese are a very predatory country. And they have basically taken all the bad characteristics of America and the Western banking system and amped it up. They haven't become better. They're not the good guys. Well, you know, I, I, think, I think you and I have another, a fundamental disagreement on this. because uh, I, okay, no, I can prove it. They're, that, they're basically another bad guy, and they're another part of another type of gold. Well, you, you just said, I mean, if you want to argue this, we can. You said China is a predatory country. They do not have a history of taking over other countries. Oh, they are. They're unlike, developing it. Unlike the Japanese, oh, unlike that's the, true. Uh, but, the British, but, the French, the Europeans, the Chinese did not colonize other nations. That's true, and in their history as such, but guess what? They have a massive learning curve, and the Chinese now, their ADIZ and their policies of the, Ameri of the Chinese military is to take over, and they're doing it financially. They're much more clever than the way we're doing it. But well, they're buying let me, let me some just go to this military question. They've yeah. been provoked by Obama's forward Asian pivot, where the it's U.S. is putting there. Marines in Australia. We're telling it's the Japanese been there. to rearm. Yeah, yeah. We're encouraging the Philippines to challenge the Chinese over islands that, that no one lives on. You know, the, the Obama yeah, policy because, uh, is yeah, provocative. That, no, that and policy has always what, been there, but Harley. What, what's happening is China is trying to have territorial control over areas where there may potentially be oil in the South China Sea. And uh, the, all the Oceania countries are all concerned about China's increased imperial uh, actions, which you write are not characteristic of China, but China is becoming very territorial in this area. And what but they're what, doing what is... What China's in, in doing, like, just in terms of Africa and things of that sort, the difference is that they're doing what the United States used to do, which is that they're making deals where they're buying raw materials that they need in return for which they're building these countries. They're building well, dams, bridges, water. I, I agree. Projects, and that, that's, what doing. That but they, that's what they're doing, for example, in Mexico. Most people don't realize all the Series 100 highways in Mexico are completely owned by the People's Republic and Army of China and the Communists. All of the new seaports, including Encinitas, uh, in Ensenada, uh, Mexico, are all owned by PLA. Most people don't realize all the new nuclear plants being built in Mexico to sell power to Americans because we won't license them in America are all being built by the communist Chinese, the same way in Tanzania where they're building railways. Uh, well, the, the and, nuclear also, plants are being built by the Chinese with German technicians because yeah, when they, Germany they, yeah, shut down its nuclear power, 
Exactly. Humans offered but the, their their nuclear engineers to, to any country that wanted to bring them in, and it's the well, Chinese the, and the Russians they, that did it. They consider the Chinese the the the, uh, the Jews of the Far East. They're smart in business and engineering, and you got to give them credit for that. But their whole policy is a form of financial imperialism, which is different than America. America is militarily imperialistic. America says if you don't agree with us, we'll just bomb you. The Chinese say we'll buy you well, out. But, they don't want to. They don't want to. But they don't want to bomb remember, Disneyland. They want to buy it out. They don't want to buy bomb California. They want to buy it out. They want. They're buying remember, all the hotel chains. The, the American military policy was directed on behalf of a British financial imperial policy, and our tradition is also different. Because if you look at the United States today, and look at what we were. At the time of the American Revolution, the Monroe Doctrine, where the whole world looked to the United States as a new model, we were right. not imperial. We were anti an anti imperial. Anti imperial, exactly. And and that's what we were under Lincoln. That's what we were in our best moments in history, and that's what's been attacked these last fifty years to turn us into a, a junior partner of a globalized casino. And you know the the real thing to look at is how do we get out of this? Do we have allies in the world that could get us help us get out of it? And ultimately, yeah. we have to do it ourselves. Well, we have I, to I, beat I, this I, in I, this oligarchy at their own. I game. like what LaRouche's foundation is doing because I've said this thing about we are by our policies, which you know when we say that of course miracles is imperial, it has been imperial. It's the only superpower. The fact is China has desires to be imperial in terms of financial control of the world within 10 years. It is saying its navy is going to soon be equivalent to the American Blue Water Navy of America. Uh, we're dealing with a bipolar or a tripolar world because even the Russians are concerned about the Chinese, even though most of the uh, jets are Russian designed. Uh, the aircraft carrier is a former Russian uh, aircraft carrier that's being rebuilt. Well, but you know, the, the, other, the other part of this is the Russians and the Chinese because of their opposition to the Anglo-American financial policy, because they, they look at what's happening in Greece and Spain and the United States, and they say this could happen to us. You know, let me just tell you one thing that's interesting. In Germany now, which has an excellent health care system until recently, they're watching Obamacare because they're basically saying that if it works, they're going to turn their insurance policy into a private uh -huh. policy. And the German people don't even realize this is about to happen. But, you know, this is what's happening in yeah, the in West. In other words, they're trying so to turn it into something. The, the, it's another form of, Obamacare is another form of austerity fascism. Yeah. What I say is we got to make sure that we, we don't aggravate the negative elements of what China is trying to do to expand to become a world power, but look the positive side. Lots of engineers, lots of intelligent people. The internal revolution is happening inside. People want a safe car breathable air, clean water, a reasonable place to live everywhere on Earth. You know, we didn't talk, we talked basically, lay out the, what the real situation is, and we had a discussion yesterday about the idea that uh, that there's it cuts both ways in terms of the uh, information. Uh, countries around the world are getting more information, and it's very good, but it's also being used to manipulate people like the Arab Spring and the social networking that was set up to bring down these nations like Libya and Tunisia uh, and to create catastrophes like to crash the economy of of uh, currently going on of uh, Ukraine. I mean, a lot of this is the same kind of orange revolution, social networking garbage that's being used with people, you know, like you mentioned, uh, Lady Gaga trying to be in involved in this whole thing. It's it's pretty disgusting. You know, it's uh, interesting. Lady Gaga, who's no longer selling many records because her, her talent is pretty thin. At the same time, she's uh, going around lecturing she Putin on human rights. She's appearing nude on a cover of a magazine called Candy Magazine, uh, yeah. nude except for a mustache on her upper lip. Now, right. you know, the, the, you, know the, you mentioned the social networking. George Soros has something called the International Renaissance Fund, 
And what he's funding is movements to overthrow Putin and to uh, disrupt China. What he's working with, and here's something interesting, Soros, who worked as a, a youth with the Nazis to sell off the art treasures of Hungarian Jews in order, at the time, it was he was uh, uh, given identification papers as a Christian, but because he knew the wealthy Jewish families, he basically worked with the Nazis to find all the art and, and treasures of Hungarian Jewish families. And when he was interviewed about this on CBS 60 Minutes in 1995 or 96, he said it was the most exciting time of his life. And it taught him everything that he's em employed to make a fortune in speculation. Now, yeah. this is an amoral killer who's right. putting together funds. What, what Soros' funds are bringing together anti-Russian, anti-Semitic Ukrainians who collaborated, their, their fathers collaborated with the Nazis in World War II. These are the people demonstrating in the streets as the great freedom fighters. And I'll just give you one other example of hypocrisy. The German president said he, this is a guy named Gauck, said that he is not going to participate in the Winter Olympics and he thinks the German government shouldn't. To punish Russia for suppressing free speech, like the so-called Pussy Riot music group. Now, okay. I would ask this president of Germany if he has the same attitude toward the Spanish government, which just passed a rule that you could be fined 30,000 euros if you're critical of the Spanish government's support of the European Union. Wow. Now, is that freedom of speech? Now, this is where you see the world is looking at Europe. They're looking at Greece, which was, you know, Greece may have had some economic problems, but they were essentially a Western industrial country. Shipbuilding, enormous shipbuilding capability, steel, machine tool. Italy, right now there's something going on in Italy called the Pitchfork Rebellions, which includes students, truckers, farmers, middle class, unemployed, who are shutting down highways and trying to, uh, they're, they're making demands against the government that they break from the European Union. In Spain, you've got a new movement emerging now, largely of children of people who are killing themselves because they can't afford medicine and they're, they're losing their homes. So you've got throughout Southern Europe a total collapse. It's also affecting uh, Northern Europe as well. Not as much, but it's starting to, and the same austerity demands are there. So people in Ukraine, the parliament in Ukraine, looked at this and said, why should we go become the next Greece by joining the European Union when we can look east and at least have some kind of involvement in production? And so Soros and others are saying, no, they have to collapse with us. Why? Because Soros will make money from it. He'll destroy nations' ability to stop speculation. And that's what this fight is. The global financial empire is about promoting speculation and swindles and fraud, and at the same time, destroying populations' ability to fight against it, like destroying, by like gutting their governments and destroying their political process and making no, people stupid. Yeah. Let, let's put on our hats, though. Let's pretend we're, we're, we're cosmic and global psychiatrists. What would your diagnosis, doctor, be for, for, for this insanity? Because when you look at it rationally, and I talk about the Joseph Project, we need people with talents of every nation, of every skin color, of every uh, b belief system to start using their rationality as human beings to do the best thing for their country and their people and the, in the world so we become true stewards of the planet so we can deal with gamma bursts, Nearer space objects like Apophysis, which is coming in 2029, and that has a one in a hundred chance of striking the Earth, not just passing you know, by. What, what you just said that's important is that it should be in our interests that these other nations develop. Right. That's what it is. Ended it's a, it's the a Joseph Project. War it's... in Europe in, in 1648, the Peace of Westphalia, where they said we should recognize the legitimacy of the other. Well, I'll give an example. It's a legitimate thing for us to develop uh, Africa rather than destroying their people. Spreading age, which is a bioweapon. Uh, destroying the population's middle classes, not just in America, but around the world. The idea of destroying the gray matter people, the elderly, that have all this accumulated historical wisdom. 
And of course, they could want to manipulate the young by lying to them and rewriting history because they have a new techno age, and if it's Googled or if it's, written, quote, written in the Internet, a lot of people will believe it, even if it's not true at all. Uh, so we're living in the brave new world. We're living in 1984 well, right it's now. It's a dark age. What LaRouche has said is this <laughs> empire has created a dark age. And in the dark yeah. age, what the only way you get out of it is by challenging the prevailing opinion and by leaping outside of accepted opinion to bring in new ideas. Well, and let's, that's look, what, let's look at the... That's what fusion the, is. That's what the, the strategic defense of Earth is. That's what Nawapa is. Get people also, to think big. Knocking down the wall between Tier 1 and Tier 2 science, we're already in, in deep space. We're doing lots of advanced things that they won't tell you from corporations like Bechtel and other corps. We have very serious challenges from space weather. And we now know, know from the ISON comet, we have Professor McKinney on, that comets are damn dangerous. And we have very grave yeah. dangers of space weather objects, which we're now monitoring in space. They could really whack our satellite systems, bring our economy to crash, coronal mass ejections. Uh, we're heading into a monitor type ice age. Everybody, the Chinese have proven this, the Russians, Dr. Habibil Adamazatov from the Russian Space Agency. This is not theoretical. And if we don't come together... And, and you know what's interesting on this, Bill, is that yeah. in two months before Kennedy was killed, he went right. before the United Nations, and he proposed a joint space effort with the Russians. And if you think about it, the, the best thing we could do now would be to collaborate on these things of uh, course. and bring the whole world in. Right now, Asian countries are going, preparing to go to the moon and we can't even get rockets off the ground. Well, the problem, in, uh, the latest negative thing I heard about what Asians are going to do is, a, remember, they always have multiple tracks. They'll have a business track and a, and a very aggressive military model track. So that's one of the ways that the Asian mind works, multiple tracks at the same time. Is they're talking about turning the moon into a Death Star. Well, if we have continued aggressive and non-conciliatory policies toward these countries, we're going to have uh, multiple dialectics of future wars, which mankind can't survive, because we're going to be going not protecting the planet from Ice ages, but I, I think it's going to be space different. Weather. I think because of the business, I think because of the business model, we're going to have to fly on an Indian rocket to the moon to get Chinese takeout food. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. And you know, there's no need for it. Uh, America, because it was free, invented ninety percent of the world's patents. Ninety percent of the world's patents are from owned by Americans, and the reason is we live in our, one of our one of our patented things was Glass Steagall. Right, and w when we start to get back to being innovative, when we start to tear down the wall between Tier 1 and Tier 2 science, when we start geoengineering the planet rationally, not with nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere, but with NAWAPA, with rational hydrofracking that doesn't destroy the, the water tables, with things that harden the power grid against coronal mass ejections and the danger of warfare where there could be EMP weapons, then we'll have a stable nation and a stable world with strong countries Rather than weak ones ready to be gobbled up by a global. Well, let's work on that for 2014. I'm, I'm positive. I think 2014 could be great opportunities. I don't think it's negative. You'll be back, I guess, the week after next. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Or, or will it? Just a second. Maybe that's going to be Christmas. I don't know. We're getting awfully close. Okay. We're going to have Keisha next week. <laughs> yeah. I think it will be. I think we'll be. Uh, it'll be the week after that. It'll be two weeks. Okay. Great. Talk to you soon. Okay, Harley, have yep. a wonderful Christmas. Take care. You too. Bye.